While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Thou that gavest me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition. It is impossible for anything to be lost. In this divine economy, nothing can be lost. It cannot even pass away. The little flower which has bloomed once blooms forever. It is invisible to you here with your limited focus, but it blooms forever in the larger dimension of your being, and tomorrow you will encounter it. Here Neville is talking about... Um, he is talking about the overall arrangement of how we experience this temporary reality. Like even the idea of it being temporary is something we're animating. Um, so in this infinite eternal storehouse of imagination, um, you can right now imagine a pink, ro pink rose in full bloom. And though it is not present in your physical reality, if you strongly identify, um, if you really distinctly imagine this pink rose bloomed so so much so that you move it into this space you will at some point encounter a blooming pink rose so that's the idea it's like it's all contained within you you can access it all through imagination and it's your strong contemplation um, and identification with it that moves it into this uh, realm of experience and supposedly the thing that we're here learning to do is how to not just select things but deselect things like deselect unwanted things and to decide if there are things that we want to use like as colors the next time we create um, all that thou gavest me I have kept in thy name and none have I lost save the son of perdition the son of perdition simply means the belief in loss Sun is a concept and idea. Perdido is loss. I have only truly lost the concept of loss, for nothing can be lost. I can descend from the sphere where the thing itself now lives, and as I descend in consciousness to a lower level within myself, it passes from my world. I say, I have lost my health, I have lost my wealth, I have lost my standing in the community, I have lost faith, I have lost a thousand things. But the things in themselves, having once been real in my world, can never cease to be. They never become unreal with the passage of time. I, by my descent in consciousness to our lower level, cause these things to disappear from my sight, and I say, they have gone. They are finished as far as my world goes. All I need to do is to ascend to the level where they are eternal, and they once more objectify themselves and appear as realities within my world. In other words, um... Imagine it. Imagine it and identify um, with having that experience. So let's say let's say it was um, a certain amount of money you lost. Imagine you have that equivalent amount of money now. A, f a physical object, put it in your hand. If you lost a physical object, put it in your hand. Um, if you feel a relationship deteriorated and you haven't had contact with the person for a while, you would desire that. Imagine you're talking to them now, and that relationship is restored or better. Um, the idea is that you can't truly lose something. Now, there is this mystery of death that we encounter. However, Neville is plain, and I have had a dream about it. Everything here is already dead. <laughs> so that, that, to me, makes the mystery of death even more complicated. <laughs> but, yeah, this idea that in imagination everything is eternal, so you simply extract it from there and you know pop it out here you you take that um sort of pre-recorded amount of film and put it in the projector and then it displays itself i by my descent in consciousness uh to a lower level cause these things or oh, okay, i'm reading here but that's okay uh i by my descent in consciousness to a lower level cause these things to disappear from my sight and i say they have gone they are finished as far as my world goes all I need to do is to ascend to the level where they are eternal, and they once more objectify themselves and appear as realities within my world. The crux of the whole 